Hello everyone, another episode of Rico's Rants, before I gotta go to work, I'm your host, Rico DiGiorgio. Today I'm picking a movie that is underrated, but I love it, it's definitely my top 10 of 2014, and I recommend it to uh, customers and to people all the time, and they've all come back and said, this was a great film, like this is really good, so clearly my taste in films is not terrible. And I I know what I'm talking about. And because people love this film. Not as much as me, probably. It's Chef. Gotta throw some love for Chef. This... I call this movie an adult family film. And the reason why is because... It has a lot of family-oriented stuff in the film. Which is very much... Um, a father and a son reconnecting with each other. A young son and 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 they love each other clearly, but they don't know each other and and the father's always been distant because he and his mother divorced. Even though you could tell there's still a lot of love between him and his ex-wife, they just they don't really ever specify why they divorced. It was probably something to tune to. He was distant or, or something, you know. They don't specify, but you could tell that, like, the divorce was, like, they both regret the divorce and not the marriage. They both very much miss each other, but they're too proud or something to ask each other out again. And the son suffers from that. And is always wanting to ask his dad, like, can we go do something? Can, and even stuff that, like, no, most kids wouldn't really have an interest in. Because his father is a chef to a, in a restaurant. And is, you know, I, I grew up in the restaurant business. My, my father and my mother both ran restaurants and were working and... My mother was a bartender and a waitress, and I've worked as a waiter, and I, I, I grew up in the restaurant business. I was also very young when my father and my mother had their restaurant, so I never really was like, let's go shopping together to get ingredients for the restaurant, which is what this kid wants to do. And his dad's like, you won't like it, it's boring, blah, 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 blah. But he takes them along grudgingly. I, again, I call it an adult family film because it's got the family stuff, but it's got tons of language. And the reason why is because if you've ever worked in a restaurant, there's nonstop cursing behind, you know, the people that serve your food and cook your food and clean up after you are always cursing. They're cutting their fingers with knives and screaming fuck in a, in a, in a trash bag or, or in a napkin so that you as a patron eating don't hear it. People are getting burns. People are cutting off fingers accidentally. People are, are you know, dropping plates. People are in a rush and say, get the fuck out of the way. Behind you, move. So it's got that. And also they're like, it's that that type of cursing where it's, um, it's passionate. It's like, look at this fucking omelet. I made the shit out of this fucking omelet. Look at that beautiful omelet. Look, it's fucking amazing. Is that fucking good? Taste the salsa. Is that fucking good? They're like, oh man, this is fucking awesome. This is really fucking good. So it's not negative cursing. It's just cursing. It's restaurant business cursing. And again, I've worked in the restaurant business. I get it. I know it. That's why I thought this movie was funny as hell. This movie is also, there's no other way to describe it. This movie is tasty. This movie is delicious because this movie not only is about a father son and 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 someone who is trying something new. This movie is very much all about food and people who love to cook and love to eat. It's called Chef for a reason. It's it's one of those great films that's like you know, Big Night or, you know, uh, Burnt, which is all about, if you love to watch the Food Network, watch these movies. It's very much food porn. It shows food being cooked professionally. 
by John Favreau, who is the main character, he's the main actor, and he's the writer, and he's the director of this film, took culinary classes from chefs to learn how to cook properly. And so when you see him cooking something, or eating something, or cutting meat a certain way, or cutting vegetables without looking, just like, you know, that's him trained, he trained for that. And I really tip my hat to him, because cooking is hard, man. There's some people who have a natural affinity for it, and natural passion for it. There are people who grudgingly do it as their job. And there's people that want to cook, and are trying to follow it, follow the recipe down to a T, and they're frustrated because no matter how they try and do it, it's not as good as how it looks in the picture, or how, or as good as how mom or grandma used to make it. So cooking is, is, is a skill and a passion and something that you learn and something that's deep inside you. And the cast in this is great. John Favreau, who, if you don't know who he is, started out as an indie filmmaker. He did Swingers, which gave him a lot of success. He, did, he made Made, the movie Made, which is a great little mob movie. You know, he started out as a young actor with Vince Vaughn. He and Vince Vaughn are buddies. And then he became a filmmaker and kept putting Vince Vaughn in his stuff. He was, you know, they were the new com they were the new duo. They were the new Scorsese De Niro type thing. And he was having moderate success. And then he boomed in not bombed, he boomed in a big way with Elf. He's the guy who directed Elf. And everyone loved that movie. Even I like that movie, and I don't, I don't like Will Ferrell. I find him obnoxious and not very funny. And I get a lot of hate for that, but I don't care. And then, John Favreau directed Iron Man. And it was his brilliant decision to cast Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. So, John Favreau is now respected as, like, he's one of the grandfathers of the MCU. He is just as important as Kevin Feige. He's just as important as Stan Lee now. He's just as important as Robert Downey Jr. He's just as important as Joss Whedon. Like, he is the grandfather, essentially, of the MCU. His decision to make Iron Man, um, and he, I think he wrote it, and but it was really his, like, you know what? I'm going to put a star who is un unbankable. People didn't... Robert Downey Jr. was coming back, but people were still like, oh, Robert Downey Jr.'s washed up. Yeah, he's still going good. I mean, he's he was great in Zodiac. He was great in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, one of my all-time favorite films, and I'll do a video about that at, at some point. Um, you know, but he's washed up. He, you know, he doesn't... He doesn't deserve a comeback, but he pushed for him, and now Robert Downey Jr. is the most bankable star in the world. No matter what, if he's in a movie, it'll make money. He's, if his face is on a poster, it'll make money. You know, Sherlock, Iron Man, The Avengers, all that shit. And John Favreau is responsible for that. Robert Downey Jr. did a lot of great acting to earn all that recognition. But it was John Favreau. John Favreau should be, should be applauded. And John Favreau's in the Iron Man movies as well. He plays Iron Man's um, bodyguard, which is sort of a running joke. He plays Happy Hogan. So you, everyone has recognized him. Be like, no, oh, that's that guy. He was also in Daredevil, the movie, not the show, years ago. So he has ties to the Marvel franchise. And he made. I remember reading he made this movie as an allegory and as a response to making these big budget movies like Iron Man, like uh, Cowboys and Aliens, um, and ultimately, eventually, The Jungle Book. He's the guy who did the live-action Jungle Book, which is amazing, and he's going to be doing the Lion King uh, live-action movie as well, which I just found out James Earl Jones is coming back as Mufasa because clearly no one can replace him as Mufasa. Great decision, by the way. Um, so he made this movie as a response to being like, I'm, I'm kind of wiped out from doing big budget movies. I want to go back to the basics and go back to something smaller. And that's what this character does. His character is a big time chef working at a five-star restaurant, 
but he is tired of not being able to show off and experiment and make delicious food that is unique and different. He's always being held back by his boss, played by Dustin Hoffman. And we haven't, I haven't seen a good Dustin Hoffman movie in a long time. So it was nice. This this has a really strong cast. Like Favreau knows what's up. He knows how to, who to cast and who to put. Every every actor knocks this ball out of the park. Like every actor is spot on and great in this. Dustin Hoffman included, and Dustin Hoffman plays an arrogant, semi selfish prick of a restaurant owner. And there's a lot of them. I've worked in restaurants. I've been a waiter. I've been fired, and I've been like this guy was. A, I, I I can't believe this. You know, not that I was an amazing chef or anything. I needed to be, I was being held back. There are just some people that just run their business their way. But at the same time, I understand Dustin Hoffman's character. He says, listen, I, I, I can't afford to be risky and have you experiment on patrons because you feel like it. I, you know, the food, the menu that you have is fine. Stick with what you know, you know. And he made this interesting analogy, like, if you're going to go to the Rolling Stones and they're not playing their biggest hits, they're all playing new stuff that you've never heard, you're going to be pissed off. They're not playing Satisfaction or Give Me Shelter. You're going to be pissed off. And then he tells them, like, stay with your hits. So he sticks with this menu that's very... Very good food, but very boring. It's the same menu that's been on for five years, and he's tired of it, and he wants something he wants to branch out. A food critic and a blogger and very well known played really really well by Oliver Platt, who should work more. He's he doesn't get enough work. I've always loved him. Um writes a scathing review, which is like you're boring. You're no longer the edgy chef that you were in Miami or, or whatever years ago. It's it's boring. Your food is just as boring as you are now. And the chef takes major, major personal uh, offense to that. Calls him out on Twitter. And he's new to Twitter. His son makes him a Twitter account. And he's never posted anything and he's so te technologically illiterate that he thinks that he just wrote a private message to Oliver Platt's character, the critic and it turns out it's broadcast everyone because he doesn't know what he's, he doesn't know. So now everyone he calls him out he's like, you wouldn't know good food if it were fucking like in your face or blah blah blah. And so now everyone is fueling this Twitter war. So now he's gotten the media after him and the critic goes back to the restaurant being promised that a new menu and new food and he gets there and Dustin Hoffman says, no, like we have all this, we have all this, we have a full house. I'm not letting you change shit. And John Favreau quits, leaves the restaurant, cooks all the food that he was intending to making that night in a great montage of him like cutting stuff and making salsa and making desserts and everything. And the critic is given plate after plate of the same boring shit and he's just disappointed. He makes another uh, shitty review. The chef reads it, goes fucking berserk, goes to the restaurant and screams at the critic in front of everyone in the restaurant, all the people, all the staff, everyone. And people are filming it and posting all that. So now he's getting more and more people. Um, he's getting unwanted attention. So he's like, okay, I need to get away from all this publicity. I need to go back to my roots. He meets up with his ex-wife's first husband, played by RDJ, who is very quirky, sort of, you know, very much the RDJ typical character, snarky, sarcastic, dry wit, dry, you know, uh, drawl, drawling accent, and kind of alluding to that he and both of their ex-wife, essentially, uh, slept together after they had broken up, like, it would be recent. Just kind of, like, throwing that in his mind just to fuck with him, and he sells him a taco truck. 
and he and the chef and his son, in the beginning of a bonding moment, clean the clean the truck together with the sole purpose they're gonna like make cubano sandwiches. <coughs> and he starts teaching his son how to work and how to have a passion for something. And for a while the son thinks of it sort of like something that like a hobby, like a game for them. And the chef sort of, you know, at one point he's like, he throws away a a perfectly good pan that's just full of rotten food because this this taco truck is just disgusting. And as they're cleaning it up, he's like, all right, take, you know, he makes the kid work. Um, and the kid throws the spade in the trash. He's like, what are you doing? That's a perfectly good pan. We'll just wash it out. He's like, no, it's disgusting. He's like, pick it out of the trash. No. I'm doing your, I'm doing, I'm, I'm not your fucking slave. And they, they sort of banter at each other. And then he realizes, shit, I, my son just doesn't know that this is important. And, and, you know, being a chef is expensive and, and it costs money and passion. You got to cut corners and, and, and you got to, and so he, they have a bonding moment. He calls up his, uh, one of his friends who worked at the, at the restaurant the previous restaurant, played by John Leguizamo. John Leguizamo's on fire. He's all, you know, Cubano, Latin, and 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 sassy and snarky, and and you know, he. I, I have worked with countless John Leguizamo types in the kitchen. Like, there's just that type, just like the the firecracker type guy who works in the kitchen who holds up a loaf of, of bread and makes it look like a giant erection. Like, hey, check this out, woo! And you're like, all right, dude, fucking stop. Go back to work. And so it's the three of them. They deck this uh, taco truck out, start making Cubano sandwiches, and they start touring across the country um, from Miami to L.A. So they stop in New Orleans. They stop in Texas. They stop all, all these places. The son, who is a... Tech, you know, is a uh, computer uh, and, and technological whiz because he's young and he knows uh, how to work Twitter and, and Facebook and stuff like that and Vines is promoting them as they're touring without even the other guys even being aware. Like, they show up in New Orleans and all of a sudden they have a line and he's like, I don't know where the fuck all these people came from. He's like, well, I've been posting about it on Twitter. So, beautiful film. And I, let me let me give me go through the rest of the cast. So, John Favreau's great. Scarlett Johansson is great in this. John Leguizamo is great. Robert Downey Jr. is great. Sofia Vergara is great. She plays his ex-wife. Um, Bobby Cannavale, I love. He 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 is not working enough. He's always I've always been a big fan of him. Um, he's another Italian American actor, and he is great. He's he's like. A, I, I am always captivated every time I watch him in something. And he plays another chef at the old restaurant, and he's like a guy who parties too much, but shows the work on time, still hungover. Um, and Dustin Hoffman's in this, Oliver Platt. I mean, the, a, a cool thing about this is, if you see, John Favreau is is a big guy. He's you know he's a heavy set dude. He's scruffy looking. He he he's not unlike me. You know he's got. He's losing his hair. He's sort of a schlubby guy. He's heavy set. He's bearded and, and everything. And he's got tattoos on him. And and you know he's he's not unattractive, but he is not you know he's not young and thin and good looking, or even particularly funny. But a running theme is women are always clamoring after him, like Scarlett Johansson who plays a. Uh, a waitress or a, or, a, or a hostess at the old restaurant in Sofia Vergara, both stunning women, amazing bodies, and 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 just beautiful, stunning, gorgeous women, and they can't resist him. And the reason why is because he's an amazing cook. There's this great thing where he's flirting with Scarlett Johansson. He's like, "Why don't you come over tonight?" She's like, "No, I, I really, I don't. I'm not in the mood." He's like, "I'll cook for you." She's like, "Ah, oh, fine," and. He's cooking some pasta for her, and he's very elaborate how he presents it. It's, he does like a French type, you know, he, he's very, not only does he cook great, but he presents it amazing. 
and serves her this delicious looking pasta after like a good two minutes of watching him cook and she's sitting on the bed half dressed watching it and it's almost like another form of foreplay she you know he gives her the plate of food she takes one bite and just has an orgasmic look mm. Mm. and like that's really it man you could you could be good looking you could have a six pack you could be funny you could be intelligent but a, just like a way to a man's heart is his stomach, same thing. If you can cook for a woman and you can cook well for a woman, that is just as attractive, if not more attractive, than having a six pack or having a full head of hair. I. This is why I try to learn how to cook, <laughs> by the way. Because I look at this, I'm like, fuck, I can cook an omelet. I'll, I'll cook some pasta. I know how to cook. And I have cooked for girlfriends, and I have cooked for ex-girlfriends. And I have, you know, they've enjoyed it. They're like, wow, this is really good. And it works. Absolutely love this film. I recommend it to all everyone. Um, I love the way that the cooking is shown. That if you're a fan of cooking and you're a fan of food, you will love this movie. My main recommendation is do not watch this movie on an empty stomach. If you're going to watch this movie, make sure you're eating something before or during. Because you will be dripping saliva down your fucking chin being like, Oh my God, I want a Cuban sandwich. After I saw this movie, I was going to go to uh, Florida with, a, with an ex-girlfriend. And I said, we have to go and get a Cubano sandwich. I saw this movie so many times, I was like, I, you don't understand. I have to get an authentic Cuban sandwich in Florida. And I went, we went and got it. And I don't, like, I don't like ham. I don't like Swiss cheese. Not big on it. One of the best sandwiches I've ever had in my life. It was well worth it. And in part because I just kept watching this, I'm like, oh, fuck, that looks so good. Easily one of my top 10 of 2014. It's not my favorite film, and it's not a movie that I'll be like, oh, years from now, I, you know, my top 10 films in life are, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark and Goodfellas and Chef. No. But it's definitely a beautiful film, and I urge everyone to watch it. Go see Chef, make sure you eat. I'll give it four stars. End it with four stars because it's an indie film. And one thing that I didn't like, and I will throw some criticism and some shade its way, is the ending was very abrupt because you're, you're going through this journey and then all of a sudden it's, oh, it's over? And I even went through the credits being like, is there gonna, uh, please be a bonus scene, it can't be over. Because I love the film that much. I'm like, oh man, why, why? It was really, it was just an abrupt ending. There are a couple parts where it's a little slower than it should be. Particularly, there's a couple scenes where, there's one scene in particular where it shows they're in Texas and they, and the family has, uh, the father and the son have just finished uh, cooking and, and, and serving to a whole line of customers. And there's a nearby stage where someone is performing a rock song. And I just felt they focused a little bit too much on... It, it just was an unneeded scene and it should just trim down a little bit. Added another location. That's what I would have liked is like maybe they stop somewhere else as a filler and or just another cooking scene. Would have been That would have been fine. But just a couple... There's a, there's a couple scenes where just like that doesn't really fit well with the film and it was just went on a little too long. So, clearly not a perfect film, but I love this film. Please go see it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Love you all. Take care.